This is your News Now Sports. Perry is on a roll. The Commodores have won nine in a row, eight of those victories coming by double digits. The red and white can clinch a 10th straight win tonight if they can get past Botkins. To Perry we go, the Trojans have other plans as they try to rebound from a loss to Fort Lormie. First quarter, Jamal Whiteside feeds Louis Hurston in the corner. He cans it from long range. Perry scores the game's first seven. And this time, Whiteside takes it himself as he explodes to the rack for two. Timeout, Botkins and the Trojans would respond. Jaden Pretty kicks to Zane Paul. He dials one up from distance. And then Pretty shows off his range as well as he buries one from behind the arc. Botkins down by nine, and the home team would pull away. Whiteside feeds Chaz Jackson. He gathers and goes glass for the deuce. Jackson leads the Commodores with 22. Perry blows by Botkins, 62-45. LCC's lost back-to-back -back games while Salinas dropped their past six. Something's got to give as these two teams match up tonight. First quarter, Brandon Yenser calls his own number from distance. The Bulldogs score the game's first five. At the other end off the miss, Demontre Garner is there for the putback. The senior gets the T-Birds on the board. Salina kept coming, though. Brett Schwederman gets past his defender and goes high off the glass for two. Salina's up three, but the home team would come out on top. Biggs Johnson finds Jeremy Allen Jr. Three ball corner pocket for the senior. LCC wins 53-46. The girls turn now as it's senior day in Shawnee with Allen Easton Town. First quarter, Lauren Cribley kicks to Allie Richardson. 4-3 as you see right here. The Mustangs will draw first blood, but Shawnee comes right back as Grace O'Connor hits a three of her own. We are level at three apiece. And then it's some Maya Wright taking it to the rim for two. The Indians trail by just three, but the road team too tough this afternoon. Final seconds of the first quarter, Tori Newland hits the elbow jumper. Allen East wins 37-32. From the high school hardwood to the college hardwood, as the UNOH women close out their regular season, welcoming Lawrence Tech to the garage. First quarter, Emily Patton spinning her way to the rim. She scoops it high off the glass and in, but the racers trail by six. Here is Fatia Larry with a great feed to a cutting Shatisha Dukes. She scores 13, UNOH within four and then it's tic-tac-toe passing and Patton puts it home from the corner. The sophomore also drops home 13 points today but UNOH loses 67-61. The UNOH men look for their fourth win in the month of February. They also finish up the season with the Blue Devils. Second half, Nathan Lessing working his way into the paint and dropping one home. The Fairlawn grad scores 14 today, racers up three. And then it's Willis Mackey Jr. taking the rock to the rack, and he's fouled. A game-high 24 for Mackey to go with 10 boards. Now Oldsby Mercer finds success driving to the hoop. UNOH wins 72-67. In Ada, senior day at ONU, Ryan Bruns and the six Polar Bears seniors honored pregame as they host Muscat. Them. Late first half, Caleb Bryan pulls up from mid-range. The junior scores 26, ONU up 11. And then it's bronze too easy for the big man in the post as he hooks it home. Timeout, Muskingum and the Marion local product continues to put on a show on senior day. This time going glass for the deuce. Bronze leads the way with 33. The Polar Bears close out the season with a 79-63 win. Xavier Simpson and the sixth-ranked Michigan Wolverines return home today as they play host to Big Ten foe Maryland. First half, X breaks the ice as Jordan Poole finds Simpson for three. Wolverines on the board. Second half, now it's X calling his own number from deep once again. The fans love it as X shoots two for two from deep today. Michigan takes an eight-point lead, and then it's Simpson late in the second half, putting it away with his patented hook shot high off the glass. 12 points, 8 assists, 5 boards for X as Michigan wins it 65-52. An A-10 battle in Dayton. Ryan Mikesell and the Flyers seek back-to-back -back wins hosting VCU. First half, the ball finds Mikesell from the mid-range. The bank is open for the junior, but the Flyers down by 9. A 15-point gap here as Dwayne Cohill's corner 3 somehow doesn't go, but Mikesell is there underneath for the rebound and the putback. It's a 12-point Dayton deficit at the half. Second half now, Mikesell left open in the corner. He doesn't miss from there. Mikesell scores 22, a new career high for the St. Henry Prize. Product, but the Flyers fall by one, 69-68. We need to take a break here on Your News Now Sports, but when we return, we head to the mats as the WBL and the NWC host their league championship wrestling tournaments today. Full highlights right after this. 
Marquee matchups on the mats today as the WBL hosts their championship wrestling tournament at Wapakoneta. A pressure-packed afternoon with title crowns on the line leads to fantastic wrestling matches. To Wapakoneta High School we go. All 10 WL teams represented in the final tournament. Championship round, Wapak's Colin Malott with a third period reversal. He wins the 106-pound conference title with a 9-0 victory. The Redskins are team champs for the 18th time. In the 113-pound final, Trevor Heisey from St. Mary's picks up three points on the near fall. He, too, wins the league title by a 9-0 score. 120 pounds, Juan Perez of Defiance bowls his way to a takedown, grabbing a 5-1 lead in the second period. Perez wins via tech fall, 17-1. And in the 126-pound finals, Elida's Connor Douglas and Lupe Martinez from Defiance go to an ultimate tiebreaker. Martinez has 30 seconds to escape, but Douglas will not allow it. That gives the Bulldogs the only point of the match and a conference crown. 138 pounds, Van Wertz, Gabe Steyer chalks up a pair of of points on the second period takedown. He wins the WBL title 10 to 3. And his Cougars teammate Isaiah Bretz brings home the 145 pound championship. Bretz with the first period takedown and route to a 7 1 victory in the finals. The NWC also hosts their league championship wrestling tournament today. They wrestle at Allen East with the home Mustangs looking to defend their title. 145 pounds Mustang freshman Chase Miller earns the pinfall in a minute and 24 seconds. He goes on to win the NWC title in his weight group. At 120 pounds, Caleb Langhouse wins with a pinfall in three minutes, five seconds. The Columbus Grove senior is the NWC champ in this class. 138 pounds, Josh Mahaffey earns a pinfall in a minute and 50 ticks. The Bluffton sophomore goes on to win a league title as well. In the 170-pound class, Ezra Jones posts another W for Columbus Grove. He pins his man in just 34 seconds. Jones wins the weight class today. 195 pounds, look at Bluffton's DeAndre Nasser keep the toes in bounds while he picks up a pin in just 53 seconds. Nasser becomes the ninth wrestler to ever finish their career as a four time NWC champion and in the 152 pound class Blake Hirschberger scores the takedown which caps a 15 nothing tech fall victory the Allen East sophomore wins his class the Mustangs are in a third straight and record eighth straight nor excuse me eighth Northwest Conference team title from the mats to the lanes as the division two boys bowling sectionals happen at Astro lanes today we're in the Baker games when Gunnar Cruzy hangs a strike on the board for St. Mary's Cruzy finishes second to only teammate Richard Hurley today the riders place three in the top four and earn the sectional title they'll be joined at next week's districts by perennial power Coldwater Kendall Homan clears the deck for the Cavaliers he finishes sixth as Coldwater ends up as sectional runners up the top four teams all advance from this afternoon Jordan Thomas drops all ten pins for St. Henry Thomas finishes seventh, helping the Redskins to third place. The final team advancing today is Fort Recovery. Elijah Stammen with the strike for the Indians. They finish one single pin ahead of Van Wert for that final district berth. The Cougars do send a pair of individual qualifiers to the next round. Nathan Bidlack clears them all. He earns the top individual qualifier spot, finishing fifth with a 587. Teammate Troy Weeks will join him in Rossford next week. Alright, thanks so much, Matt. We'll wrap things up after the break.